May I come in? Come in. Good afternoon. Yes. Uh, Shruti is from Nasik. Yes. This, uh, you, I have seen your email, this 40, what it signifies? Sir, nothing. That nothing. was the only thing that was available. That's <laughs> sure. I thought there is something special about this. Okay. You have worked in some NGO, yes. Salam Balak Trust. Yes. Can you explain me what was it? Uh, so I worked with underprivileged children, uh, primarily children of the slums of uh, Bombay. I used to teach them after their school was done to help them with their coursework. I primarily taught to students from class 8th and 9th. This was only boys or girls also? Uh, one girl, one boy. Huh? G girls and boys both. So, but why this name is Balak? Balak is generally taken as boy. Uh, no, sir. I think in, in that context, it As signifies children. Yes. <clears throat> See, because of this war, we are affected. Russia, Ukraine war and all. Eh? Oil, a eh? lot of exports were there from Russia. Yes. Now, Russia also needs some imports. Yes. And I think Russia requested India also. You know about that? What imports India, Russia wants from India? Uh, so I'm not specifically aware of. Not specifically aware. They want some supply of food and sugar and all from India. <clears throat> <clears throat> Something about fair price shops. Fair price shops. Yes, sir. How, how many we have in the country? So I'm not aware. Okay. Specific. What has happened? What developments have taken place in the last seven eight years, as far well, as far as fair price shops are concerned? So we have the one nation one ration card scheme. That is very recent. Yes, sir. Is? Two years old. Yes, we mm. have uh, that scheme so mm. that migrants are able to get ration everywhere in the country. Apart from that, sir, um, uh, there have been reforms in warehousing and storages. Mm. Oh. Not only that, some big reforms have taken place. I'm sorry, sir. I See, this one ration, one card is because of this COVID only, that migrant problem and all. But before that, are those linked to some Aadhaar or something? So, um, no, no I, idea. I because fair price shops are so, sort of hub of corruption. After this introduction of Aadhaar, linking with Aadhaar and all. So, yeah, direct benefit transfer has uh, happened. Yes, sir, I recall it. Uh, it has been linked to Aadhaar card. So, now uh, at fair price shops, you require biometrics also and Aadhaar also to get ration. Pin phrase has uh, yes, been reduced sir. drastically ha. and number yes. of ration cards also. Yes. People All are the... having two, three ration cards in different yes, places. Sir. That has stopped. Yes. That has happened and it has also led to people receiving more ration ha. without the government increasing the amount because diversion has reduced. Uh, PM Adars Gram Yojana. Heard of this? Uh, or, or Sansad Adars Gram Yojana. Yes, sir. Uh, it is the. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm mm -hmm. unable to call. When it was started, any idea? No. What was the objective? Uh, so I think its objective is to create model gram sabhas and gram panchayats in the country and to uh, help them become more self reliant. Okay. Labor laws? Yes, How many sir. labor laws we have? Uh, so we have four labor codes, nearly 44 labor laws were codified into four labor codes that we have. One is on occupational safety, other on social security, other on uh, wages and the third, fourth one on industrial relations. So see there was one uh, report in newspaper, some Kerala nurse has been convicted in Yemen. Yemen, have you heard of that? I'm sorry sir. In some countries, <clears throat> If some uh, crime has taken place, say murder or something, then uh, uh, that case can be done away with if some blood money is given. You know about that? Blood money. What is that blood money? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this so, so far social security, some sectors have been re uh, this reorganized. E uh, Ishram. Yes, sir. Ishram, you know? Yes. Sir. What is that? So, Ishram portal is to uh, facilitate registration of informal workers so that uh, they can be provided with social security, the economy workers, the platform workers, they can all be registered at the Ishram portal. Migrants can also be registered there so that 
uh, it leads to better data collection and better social security for them. When it started? Uh, it was provided under the labor codes and it recently started, I think, uh, in the year 2021 only. Brushti. Yes, sir. What, do you, what does the word Brushti mean? Sir, it is Sanskrit for monsoons. Monsoons. Yes. Okay. Do we have a good monsoon this year? It is predicted by the IMD that we are going to have a normal monsoon this year. Okay. Uh, what's special about Indian monsoon? Sorry? What is special about Indian monsoon? Uh, so the Indian monsoon, uh, the special thing is that uh, we receive rains because of the changing of pressure belts and there are two specific uh, tanks that we receive. We receive uh, rains from the southwest monsoons also and from the northeast winds also. So okay. Nasik is uh, famous for its vineyards. Yes sir. Can you tell me something more about uh, what uh, geographic factors and climatic factors uh, makes it ideal for vineyards? Uh, climatic factors would be that it is Nasik is on an elevation of nearly 800 meters that helps. Secondly, it has abundance of black soil and red soil, which is also good for production of uh, grapes. Thirdly, it is on an average a cold climatic region, which is why uh, storage of grapes is also for longer times. Thirdly, uh, apart from that, uh, there are there is also market available in terms of cosmopolitan regions of Pune and Mumbai, which have also helped uh, Nasik emerge. What are the types of wines manufactured in uh, Nasik? Uh, so there are different kinds of uh, wines that are manufactured. Uh, so I do not know the specific. Uh, type. Where else is wine manufactured in India? And globally, which are the largest man manufacturers of wine? So the Western nations in America, there's the Napa Valley, where, which is very famous for the production of uh, wines. In Europe also, there are famous regions of Switzerland, France and Italy, where wines are produced. In India, where else is it manufactured wine? Uh, in India, it is also being manufactured in Bangalore and Karnataka region. You majorly have red wines and white wines. What is the primary difference between these wines? Sorry, I do not okay. know. People from Nasik should know yes, about wines. Yes, I, I should know. Uh, you're a student of sociology. Yes. How do you look at uh, the farm suicide uh, in Maharashtra from Durkheim's theory of suicide? So we can uh, look at farmer suicide from all the four suicides that Durkheim lists down in his theory of suicide. For example, it is fatalistic suicide also because when there is a change, there is a can I just take a minute to recall his four right. types of suicide? Yes, sir. Uh, egoistic suicide would be because a lot of farmers feel helpless. They feel that they are not being able to provide for their family, which is why they uh, commit suicide. It can be anomic suicide because there is a lack of social security and safety from the state, uh, which is why they feel a sense of uh, alienation, which is why there are a lot of suicides. And apart from that, there is also uh, the altruistic suicide because many of them believe that the state will compensate their debts, which is why uh, their families will be better off. So there are various ways we can look at. Can you tell me more about your college, uh, St. Xavier's College, uh, Mumbai? Uh, so it is. It was built in the 18th century, primarily by the Spanish Jesuits, and uh, it is a premier college for uh, humanities and uh, primarily for uh, humanities. It also has. Uh, it houses a specialized division for study of ancient history, and also for the study of gemology and public policy. What? Who are some of the prominent uh, alumni of this college? Uh, there are various prominent alumni of our college. From the entertainment industry, there is Vidya Balan, there is uh, uh, Ratna Patak Shah, Nasruddin Shah. These are from the entertainment industry. From industrial uh, sector, we have Azim Premji. Uh, from the politician uh, side, we have also Aditya Thakre, who is an alumni from St. Xavier's College. And uh, that's the sort. Okay. Um, economics. How do you look at uh, the current economic situation in Sri Lanka as a student of economics? 
So, uh, Sri Lanka has been going through a balance of payment crisis. It is set to default on all of its loans, which is outstanding in the state. And as a student of economics, I see it as a culmination of a lot of populist policies, such as the reduction, the ad hoc reduction in taxes, the overnight shifting of the economy to, uh, say, organic agriculture without uh, b banning fertilizers. And thirdly, uh, diversification. There was a lack of diversification. Primarily, the revenue came from tourism, which plummeted dur during COVID and before that. Which Indian states can be compared to Sri Lanka in terms of economic policies? Uh, so recently, we can say that the state of Punjab can be uh, compared because Punjab has one of the highest debt to GDP ratios. Less than 5% of its state's budget is spent on capital expenditure. And uh, majority of its revenue is gone into interest payments. So if we can say that it could be one of the states if it does not take. So how do you look at uh, the government's recent announcement to give 300 units of power? Do you think they'll be able to uh, fulfill that? Or uh, what, what do you think about this? Sir, so I believe that um, uh, freebies such as free electricity and other things should be a prudent policy decision which needs to be taken by taking into account the fiscal situation of the state. For example, Delhi can afford to give 300 free units because it is usually a budget surplus state and a, a city, sorry, budget surplus city and it also has a lot of... Uh, do you think even if we can afford to give it, is it a right decision to do? So I believe that uh, it will depend on a lot of circumstances. Uh, under these situations, Punjab should ideally not be giving it because it is not in a uh, situation to afford more revenue expenditure. So, no, I'm saying if a state could afford to do it, right? Should the state do it? Uh, I if you are an economic advisor to a state, would you recommend this policy? Sir, uh, I believe if the electricity, uh, the 300 uh, free units of electricity is in a way, for example, right now due, due to COVID, the disposable incomes of people have gone down. So if, if they are able to reduce their expenditure on electricity, which has been rising, it will also lead to more uh, disposable income in their hands, which can be spent on other economic activities. So for, as a temporary measure in a state which has a, a good fiscal situation, I wouldn't think it is. Please say that. Yes. Uh, so Nasik is uh, so Nasik is situated at an elevation of nearly 800 kilometers. It uh, it is a primarily agrarian as well as industrialized city. It enjoys uh, big big industries of agro processing like the vineyards. It also has uh, a cantonment area nearby, which is the Devlali Cantonment Board. It has industrial regions in terms of uh, many uh, plants such as of uh, car making companies such as uh, Mahindra uh, and uh, co considering its demography it holds a lot of potential to emerge as one of the major cities of Maharashtra. All right. You also do trekking. Yes. How often do you do it? So uh, I usually go twice or thrice a year. Right. So where have you been in the last year? So in the last year, it was primarily in Maharashtra, near my hometown. Uh, it was uh, Ramshej Fort, the Harish Chandra Gad. These are the two places that I went to. Any other trekking sites in Maharashtra? So Maharashtra has various trekking sites, primarily because it is in the Western Ghats. So uh, uh, there is Kalsubai, which is one of the highest peaks in uh, Maharashtra. Apart from that, uh, so majorly in the Western Ghats, we have a lot of areas. Okay. Uh, how is trekking different from uh, hiking or mountain climbing? So, trekking would come somewhere in the middle of hiking and mountain climbing. Hiking is usually a one day, very small uh, stroll sort of thing that we take over usually plain areas. It is not so much of slope. Mountaineering is even higher version. It is climbing big, big mountains at a at a much larger elevation. Trekking is usually five to six days, where you, or it ranges anywhere between two to seven to 15 days. And it is uh, somewhere in the middle. It is not as tough and it is not as easy as hiking. All right. IMF and World Bank have uh, released their studies on extreme poverty. 
Yes. Have you gone through the reports or the news article? Yes, sir. Uh, IMF and World Bank have said that India has been able to reduce its absolute poverty to less than 1% and it has been able to maintain this even during COVID times. Absolute poverty or extreme poverty? Absolute poverty, sir. What is absolute poverty and what is relative poverty? Uh, sir, absolute poverty is not being able to afford even the basic necessities of food, clothing and shelter. And relative poverty is in terms of uh, other people in the country. Alright. Why you want to join the civil services? Sir, I want to join the civil services primarily to uh, work in the development sector. This uh, services, The services provide me an opportunity to work with diverse sectors in the country and make an impact at a much larger scale is the reason why I want to join. Uh, you wouldn't uh, think of doing MBA, so your BA honors, eco, eco honors or yes. BA general? Uh, BA general economics. Okay, yes. all right. So you wouldn't think of joining the private sector? Uh, sir, I uh, I thought of it, but first I wanted to uh, give my time to the civil service preparation, primarily because it is such a unpredictable cycle. And after that, I would have explored it. Okay, all right. So you have worked in an NGO also. Yes. Sir. Do you think the government has been using the FCRA Act and various provisions of FCRA to stifle the NGOs and uh, it is often used as a tool to stifle the opposition also. So, uh, the FCRA Act as, uh, is aimed at uh, ensuring that foreign fundings are not used for anti, uh, for anti-state activities and I believe that the uh, government is primarily just making the rules more stringent so that they are not used that way. Uh, the ED has also pointed out that there are a num number of NGOs who have not filed their returns, who have uh, used their, who have diverted the foreign funding for various reasons. And the government has also said that it has given a lot of warnings to the NGO to submit their returns and after that they have been banned. So I do not think that it is being used for that. Okay, all right. Uh, you have also uh, taken up sociology as your option, right? Yes. Can you tell me why many social reform movements uh, and many leaders have emerged from Maharashtra? Uh, so one of the reasons why they have emerged from there is because of large scale education. Uh, for example, we can see from the times of Jyoti Bha Phule and Savitri Bhai Phule, there has been a spread, general spread of education in the state of Maharashtra. Secondly, there have been uh, a lot of uh, rulers like Sahu Maharaj, Shivaji, who have in general taken reforms for the lower caste and the lower sections, which has proliferated into a wider movement for social reform. Okay, L last question. India has agreed to pass participate in the virtual meet of BRICS leaders in a couple of months. Do you think BRICS holds any relevance given the uh, conflict with, uh, you know, uh, India with China and then again Russia? So I believe that BRICS has emerged as uh, in order to bring about reforms in the financial uh, institutions and other multilateral institutions. And I believe that now more than ever, it holds more significance because these are economies with similar economic and social conditions. And uh, this can be a platform to smoothen out the uh, situations at a geopolitical and at a global level. Thank you. So, Vishti, you've read for economics, you've read commerce, read accounts. Um, tell me something, how the problem of information asymmetry plummets the share price markets? Uh, can I just take a second one? Yeah. Ma'am, due to information asymmetry, uh, it can lead to general uh, panic and people may not know in general about what the asset is worth and that can lead to uh, mass, say, selling of shares which can lead to plummeting of share prices. How can we correct this? How can we solve this problem? Uh, one of the ways would be a greater level of financial inclusion more education to retail investors on how the markets work because now we are seeing a lot of retail investors in the country who are primarily young so i i one of the ways would be to improve their education levels we can also include uh, more courses on finance at a high school level so this can 
on an in a general level help uh, that's a very interesting point you've made so uh, let's take this further and understand that uh, what are the current challenges that the indian financial sector is facing according to your view uh, one of the challenges it is facing is the capital flight fpis have uh, there's a capital flight secondly with uh, the us federal reserve set to increase its rates and uh, reduce the purchase of assets this can again lead to a taper tantrum that is one of the uh, issues that we can face but uh, because we have a decent level of the foreign exchange reserve i think the on a financial sector part we are a resilient economy right yeah but uh, in terms of say the uh financial regulations that we have in india uh what do you think are the challenges that uh, the financial sector faces on account of inadequate regulation do you see any problem with the regulatory framework of financial laws in india uh we are seeing a rise in non performing assets that is one of the issues and because of the regulations for example rbi has a much greater control over private sector banks compared to public sector banks which account for a larger share of loans that are given to the countries so uh, that is something that we should work on okay as a common student uh, what do you understand by a startup what is a startup a startup is a institution which uh, is relatively new starts by raising capital from various sources is usually uh, less than 5 years old as per the definition that we go by. which is the current department ministry looking after this in india uh, ministry of commerce looks after yeah but which particular department uh, i'm not aware of the particular department okay uh, what are the criteria required for a startup to be recognized by the concerned department that is department for promotion of uh, uh, industry and internal trade so that looks after startups so what are the criteria that the government looks for for a startup to be recognized uh, first would be uh, how old the startup is it has it if it is it has to be relatively newer for it to be classified as startup and no other than that i'm not very aware of it okay you must have read about price when you were stud studied for economics type what is the price demand supply uh in your understanding which is a best form of a market a best form of, ma of a market like a monopolistic competition market is a uh, a good market in a, a market in which uh, there are firms which there there are reduced barriers to entry there are firms which are able to interact with the market uh, there isn't a lot of government uh, uh, inter intervention in the market there is easier exit available i think that kind of market is uh, but you are in a monopolistic position monopolistic competition man okay so uh, uh, so who is going to be the price taker there and who is going to be the price maker there so uh, there won't be a single price maker over there because uh, there will be a lot of firms in one department it will be based on the competition in the market whoever gives a better product better quality and tries to price it it will be according to that and the price takers would be the consumers and they can they also have a lot of say in uh, because it is a market which will be driven by demand and supply so in that kind of market can consumers influence the prices in the market yes ma'am consumers can influence the How? prices in the market uh, for example if there is a huge demand for a particular product mm. the prices rise mm. if consumers stop consuming that product mm. for example if the trend for a certain type of clothing in, if a celebrity uses it everybody else would want to use it and that's how consumers influence the price of the market that's how they do you uh, so uh, how do you differentiate between a price competition and a non price competition we discuss about the price right so what is the difference between the pri uh, between 
competition which is primarily price based and a competition which is non price based <laughs> you mentioned something about celebrities what are your views about celebrities endorsing products uh, uh, which are harmful to uh, general public and uh, are you aware about any government framework or the legal framework regulating this um ma'am i believe that as uh, celebrities as people in positions of power they have a moral responsibility towards the people and they must endorse products which they are correctly and properly aware of so that uh, consumers can also not be uh, not be uh, misled about the product uh, as far as the act is concerned we have the consumer protection act which provides for liability for people who for celebrities who endorse uh, products which have harmful effects on the people okay and uh, one last question uh, i want to know from you um, what is the current regulation with respect to the netflix the ott platforms that we watch uh, because this needs to be regulated there's a proliferation of this uh, yes on the web space so do we have a framework for this uh, right now we have a voluntary framework for it by which uh, these ott and uh, all of these other channels and subscription based models regulate themselves we do not have a legislation right now as far as my limited understanding goes ma'am okay dosti your interview is over thank you sir we're happy with the performance So I think there are a lot of things that I didn't know. I have to work on that. You are done very well, <clears throat> well composed and smiling. Uh, only thing is, eye contact with other members was not there. Okay. You are ignoring when you are okay. replying to <laughs> ignoring other. I will people. work on that. Don't do that. <laughs> Keep on revising your counterparts. You got time. Yes. Almost twenty uh, twenty five days are there, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I just noticed that you, when question is posed to you, immediately you tend to reply. Yes. Then all of a sudden you stop, realizing that you yes. may not be knowing that. Yes. Hmm? Maybe take some few seconds to before starting to reply, and if you don't know, say sorry. I don't know. Yes. Hmm? I think the same uh, thing before starting. Like mm -hmm. you know, I think well, I think more than two three instances you started out, and yes. then you realize yes. you don't have sufficient mm -hmm. content. Uh, I think uh, Nasik wine. Uh, I, I, I think there's a direct connection. There's a lot of questions that could come, and I, I was not satisfied. Neither do I know the difference between red and wine. <laughs> I can have yes, just, I should know. Uh, you should know, right? Uh, very confident, poised, composed, knowledgeable. Eye contact would be better. Yes. Sir. And I think in between you have a kind of a smile, like you know. Uh, sometimes it feels like it's a smirk, like you know, oh, like, yeah. you know <laughs> right? But but like you know, odd places. Just go back and watch the videos. Yes. And one question she asked. I think uh, you we were not knowing the reply. Then you smile. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, didn't. I shouldn't have. So good personality overall. Uh, calm and composed. You have a smiling face. So many many good points. Uh, just two three points which have been already been put. Take care of that. Yes. Nothing you to add. Whatever the sir said. All the best. Thank you so much.